Hey, I'm Mike Backrell, and today we're doing something a little different than what we normally do. Usually we do a lesson of a line or a concept, but today we're going to take a look at a list of the top 10 great jazz guitar players that influenced my development. Now keep in mind, this is a personal list. These are my top 10 players that influenced who I would become musically. I'm sure your list looks different, so please let me know in the comments. You know, what is your top 10, top 5, top 3, whatever it is. I want to know who's on your list. So with all that being said, let's get started. <laughs> So for number 10, we're going to start with Charlie Christian. Charlie Christian definitely changed the course of guitar in the realms of jazz. You know, and I know he wasn't technically the first ever guitar player to play with an amplifier, but he was the first one to do it in a way that had an impact that was widespread and influenced a lot of people. He was the one of the first guys to really start playing guitar and improvise the way a horn player would improvise, using those kind of phrases. There were a lot of great players before him, like Eddie Lang, but they played in a quite a different way because of the limitations of the instrument at the time. Charlie took it into a different area. And even looking 80, 90 years on, his improvisations are incredibly modern, even by today's standards. And the way he improvised using chord shapes really had a huge impact on me. Once that was pointed out to me and I made sense of it all and then could see what he was doing with those shapes, it was more than a light bulb going off. It, it, it completely changed how I viewed the instrument. It's still something that I carry with me to this day that I use all the time. I've learned tons of his solos and I'm always reciting things from them because the stuff he played was so fantastic and so impactful to me. For number nine, we have Herb Ellis. Herb Ellis was the first guitar player, or first musician, period, to, to really sell me on jazz. Prior to discovering Herb Ellis, I had bought a couple jazz albums because I was told, you know, I should be getting into jazz and I need, to, I need to listen to jazz and jazz will challenge me and all these different things that intrigued me, but the sounds of the music hadn't sold me yet. The first two albums I bought were Miles Davis's Feast of Kilimanjaro and John Coltrane's Giant Steps. And those albums didn't do it for me at the time. I still don't really like Feast of the Kilimanjaro. It's the only Miles album that I don't love. But Giant Steps is going to be one of my absolute favorite albums of all time. But at the time, when I first heard those, my ears weren't ready for such complicated sounds or such out there ideas. But I stuck with it and picked up the Oscar Peterson album, Hello Herbie. And this completely changed my life. This album sounded like a party. It was just a blast to listen to. Herb Ellis' soloing and comping throughout this record really are incredible. And obviously Oscar Peterson is a monster to listen to. That's the album that officially set me on my, on my path into jazz and really grabbed my ears and made me a listener. And Herb Ellis is playing on everything that I find him on is fantastic. I've picked up a lot of great stuff from him over the years. He's one of those players I'll never get over. And number eight, we have Ted Green. Ted Green is possibly one of the greatest guitarists to ever pick up the instrument. Just a brilliant, brilliant musician. I love single note playing, but chordal playing is something that is just so exciting to me and something I could spend days and days working on without really getting tired of it. And I, I credit Ted Green for giving me that love of harmony. I had purchased chord chemistry and modern chord progressions and started really digging in and just just getting obsessed with how many different ways I could play an F chord or an A or an A triad or something like that and seeing different ways you can link things. And then once he starts moving notes on the top and moving notes in the middle on the bottom, you start to see there's this whole world of harmony there. And we are so lucky that there is the Ted Green archives where we can find tons of video of him playing and teaching concepts. There's more than multiple lifetimes worth of stuff to get into. And it, it constantly inspires me. And if you've never checked out his album, Solo Guitar, you're missing one of the greatest accomplishments on the instrument ever. It is unbelievable. And number seven, we have Wes Montgomery. And I know seven probably seems low for Wes, but the people above him had an even bigger impact on me, incidentally. Wes is, to me, the perfect musician one of the most perfect players that's ever existed in any instrument. I can't think of a single moment in his recorded output where I think he could have played more or I think he could have played less. He 
always played the right amount and he always built his solos in such an amazing arc his octave playing his chord soloing all these things you know his his three level approach to improv his ability to take melodies and run with them and it's I, can't, I, I could gush about him all day. I've learned a lot of his solos and a lot of lines, and he is a constant source of inspiration. He's one of those players I'll still be stealing from in 50 years. My favorite album of his is The Incredible Jazz Guitar Of, but anything you check out is going to be worth your time. Everything he ever recorded, and I know some people aren't really hot on the, the more smooth jazz stuff he put out, but it's still wonderful music with some great octave playing and some cool arrangements. In addition to those, I think Smoking in the Half Note is possibly the greatest recorded guitar album up up there with Band of Gypsies by Jimi Hendrix and Solo Guitar by Ted Green. I think if you haven't heard Smoking in the Half Note, you need to drop everything and listen to it right now. And number six, we have George Benson. George Benson didn't grab my ear at first. I bought Breezin the same time I bought Hello Herbie. And Breezin is one of my favorite albums of all time nowadays. But when I first heard it, it didn't really grab me. I, and I don't know what I missed, but it just didn't grab me. George's playing on that record is incredible. George's playing on all the records before that are incredible. You know, when he's doing more straight ahead stuff. George's playing on everything after that is incredible. When I was first coming up, I was a big shredder and a huge metalhead. And hearing George Benson's chops always hits me. He has unbelievable technique. His phrasing, his harmonic ideas, just unbelievable stuff. When I was in grad school, I went through a huge George Benson phase, and that's really all I wanted to do was just be George Benson. So I, I learned every single line I could. I learned every every solo, every tune, and the way I phrase, and the way I view, view harmony, and the way I use chromatics, and all these things. George really changed my playing in a huge way. Standout albums are It's Uptown, Beyond the Blue Horizon, uh, Breezin, as I already mentioned, Weekend in L.A. is incredible. Any of the stuff he did for CTI, any of the Sideman stuff he did early in his career, like with Stanley Turrentine or uh, Freddie Hubbard, all is incredible stuff to check out. And number five, we have John Paisano. John Paisano is one of the hugely underrated heroes of jazz guitar. He was around from the 50s all the way up into the 2020s, playing and just doing great stuff. I was very fortunate to see John play at least 50, if not 100 times. When I was in grad school, my dad and I went to Guitar Night when he hosted it in Burbank almost every single week and just watched him play with all kinds of great players. But he was always just an inspiration. And I was very fortunate to get to go to his house a couple times and take lessons from him and just hang out with him and play. And he's an, he was an incredibly gracious guy, um, just a wonderful person to talk to. But he was a great player with a huge knowledge and I really regret that I didn't really dig into his recorded output until after I spent all that time with him after I moved away from LA and I didn't and I didn't get a chance to see him anymore I really dug into all of his old recordings in the 50s and 60s with Chico Hamilton and and other duos and trios and stuff that he put together with Fred Katz and Billy Bean on guitar just a lot of incredible stuff and it really showed how far ahead of the curve John Paisano was you know we look at a lot of these these great players from the time period like Tal Farlow and, and Barney Kessel. But John had equal to, if not greater, technique and har harmonic knowledge and phrasing and all kinds of stuff. And he's just it's just a huge shame that he's not one of the guys people really look up to. There's so many great recordings to check out from John, but my favorite is the original Ellington Suite with a really young Eric Dolphy. <music> and number four, we have Joe DiOrio. Joe DiOrio changed the way I, I viewed music. His inter wide intervallic stuff, his freedom of harmony, his just his chordal playing will be an inspiration for me until the end. I, I can't think of a of a more interesting player. I'm always working on his stuff and listening to his, his albums, and I'm always blown away by the stuff he was able to do. I recommend checking out anything you can from him. He, he, we're lucky enough to have a bunch of books that he did. Um, intervallic Designs, uh, Fusion Guitar... Uh, he has a he has a blues book. There's a rhythm changes book. There's a book on giant steps he wrote. He had a couple instructional videos. So we have a lot of instructional stuff from him that we can use to be inspired by. But we should also be listening to his stuff he did with Eddie Harris. He he, he did some records with the Candoli brothers, and then he had a bunch of records out himself. And everything he ever did is incredible, and I recommend all of it. <laughs> and number three, we have Jimmy Weibel. Jimmy Weibel completely blew my mind the first time I heard him. I had never heard music like that. 
you know, and, and, and when I was doing my undergrad, I, I listened to a lot of classical, you know, as part of, as part of the curriculum and you would hear counterpoint, but I never heard counterpoint played with this kind of harmony. It really, it really messed me up for a long time. You know, that's all I wanted to do was just counterpoint and some of these abstract sounds. And if, if you listen to my, to my newest album, Standard Deviation, you could hear that I'm taking a lot of this Jimmy Weibel stuff with me and I'm trying to use it in my own ways. Everyone knows Jimmy for his counterpoint stuff, but he was also a brilliant single note player. And there's a lot of great Western swing music that he was featured on and a lot of great jazz music that he was featured on. And you could hear him in solos. He played with Red Norvo for quite a while and did a handful of great records there. He was with Benny Goodman and there, there, there's some records you can hear him on there. And then he, he did a couple records himself too. The only one that's available nowadays is you can get his album Diana in Japan. Uh, it, it was released on CD in Japan. And that's the only place it was released. And then there's a couple albums that are only on vinyl and will probably never get a CD release. But you could probably find them on YouTube and you know if you're willing to search, search around a little bit. But I like Jimmy Weibel so much so that I actually <clears throat> bought a guitar that he used to own. I got this from Bruce Foreman and playing through some of his etudes on a guitar that he used to own is very it's a very cool kind of experience before we get to my top two i want to take a second and go through some honorable mentions you might notice that so far on my list there's only older guys that play more traditional older jazz music i don't have any modern guys but that doesn't mean they didn't influence me guys like jonathan kreisberg and kurt rosenwinkel had a huge impact on me pat metheny as well had a huge impact on me uh and, and i practice their stuff i transcribe them all the time it just they didn't have the same impact on me that these other players did some other guys that really stick out johnny smith grant green grant green's melodic phrasing will always blow me away his rhythmic phrasing was always blow me away too howard roberts just super funky super interesting really great ideas in addition to those guys two guys that had a big impact on me as well are jody fisher and Corey christiansen Corey christiansen I got a study with a little bit years and years ago, back in 07, 2007, 2008. Corey was the first guy I ever saw play jazz guitar in person at this really high level, and it really had a big impact for me. Now, at the time I was able to study with him, jazz wasn't at the forefront of my mind yet, so I probably didn't get as much out of him as I could have. But seeing him play like that planted a seed in my head. And then Jody Fisher was someone that I got to study with privately during my undergrad, and I can't say enough great things about Jody. Jody's an amazing guy, a really friendly, generous guy, but an amazing player and an even better teacher than he is a player, as great of a player as he is. My love for a lot of these guys like Ted Green and Joe DiOrio and Jimmy Weibel all stems from Jody pushing me in those directions. So I owe him a lot. Now let's get on with the top two. Deciding between number one and number two was really difficult for me because it could switch at any time. But as I thought about it more, one had a bigger impact on me personally, so I had to put him at number one. But number two is Joe Pass. And Joe Pass is probably my favorite guitar player on any day of the week. Joe is just the most complete player I can think of. His solo guitar stuff obviously is some of the greatest that's ever happened on the guitar. But his playing in, in, in bands is incredible as well. His single note playing... Uh, his comping, he's just the complete package. And there's no Joe Pass record that I that, that, that I wouldn't recommend. Actually, I take that back. There is one record I don't recommend. He did a duo record with uh, Oscar Peterson. And Joe's playing on it is great. But Oscar Peterson is playing a harpsichord for some reason. And it's a very hard album to listen to because of the sound of the harpsichord. Especially when Joe's soloing. When you try to comp on a harpsichord, it just doesn't sound good. I don't know why Oscar Peterson chose that. But that is the only record from either of those guys that I wouldn't recommend. Standout records. All four Virtuoso records. All of his duo stuff with NHOP. Anything he did with Oscar Peterson except for that one record I mentioned. His albums with Herb Ellis. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on. His really early stuff that he recorded um you know in the 60s some of the stuff he did as a sideman in the 60s it's just amazing amazing stuff joe's single line playing his chordal stuff the way he weaves in and out of everything his bass lines his comping it's just i, I can't say enough about him he's another one of those guys that will inspire me until the end all right now for number one 
Bruce Foreman. I said Joe Pass is my favorite guitar player, but Bruce Foreman's right there neck and neck with him at all times. Everything I said about Joe's playing would apply to Bruce's playing. Bruce is the complete player as well. He could play a, an amazing solo guitar version of anything on the fly and play it differently every single time because he just knows everything that intimately. Every tune, every harmony, everything. He's the, one of the most complete players I can imagine. Bruce, in addition to being one of my absolute favorite guitar players, he was my mentor for a number of years when I was in grad school. And even beyond that, when I was in grad school, Bruce lived very close to me. So we would do lessons at his place and hang out and go for walks and carpool to school. And I would go to every one of his gigs. And I just spent a heinous amount of time with him for a couple years. And Bruce rubbed off on me, not just guitar wise or musically, but just on the way I function as a human. It was more life lessons. It was just business lessons, how to... Uh, how to conduct oneself, just how to how to be a, a good person, I think. I got a lot of that from Bruce. His sense of humor, all these things really rubbed off on me in a big way. And I can never thank him enough for all the things I got from him. Bruce is someone that's always pushing me. I do I, I transcribe a lot of his stuff. I, I go back to our old lessons a lot of times. And there's always thing new things I'm able to pick up from him. He's probably the reason why I sound so bebop, you know, um, because the way he plays his language in, you know, infected me so much. Any album you can live, you can find him on is going to be worth your time. He's, he's done a lot of sideman stuff. All of his records are really good. I'd recommend any one of them. Formanism, um, volume one and two, uh, live bootleg coast to coast. The one where he's wearing two sweaters, um, all of his sideman stuff, the stuff he did with Richie Cole is very cool. Anything you can find him with. The Junkyard Duo is a blast to listen to. I recommend any and everything you could do. I wish Bruce would do a solo guitar record. I'm going to try to talk him into that at some point because I've sat with him in lessons and he would just play these amazing solo versions and it's not, and he doesn't arrange them. He just plays them on the fly, just like Joe Pass did. And, um, I would love to get a record like that someday from him. This was my list of the top 10 guitar players that impacted me. I want to know what your list is. So leave a comment down below. And, and let me know if you like the format of this. I have some more ideas of other videos like this I could do where it's not necessarily a guitar lesson, but still guitar information, which I think is very important too. It's not just all about the notes we play, but who we're listening to and the places we take inspiration from. So I think it's all stuff worth talking about. So thanks for checking out today's list. Keep practicing. I'll see you next time.